Hi, how are you doing? It's Rich from Racing Profits and I just wanted to bring you a quick video revealing the secret to picking the winner of the Grand National. It's obviously regarded as one of the biggest lotteries in horse racing is the Grand National and ironically the first winner of the National back in 1839 was a horse called Lottery. I grew up as a small boy in the 1970s with Red Rum dominating this race. Won in 1973, won in 1974 and 1977 and then in the years in between, 75 and 76, he came second. This race, more than any other, sparked my passion and my love for the sport of horse racing. It really is a race like no other. Every jump or every enthusiast of racing has their favourite races. The jumps fanatics look forward all winter to March and the magic of the Cheltenham Festival. The flat fans love Royal Ascot, the Derby at, the, at Epsom the Oaks at Newmarket or the St Ledger at Doncaster but one race that unites everyone is the Grand National at Aintree in April. Fences like no other, it's a true stamina test, the fences, the distance, the ultimate test of endurance and skill for a horse and jockey. The huge drop of Beeches Brook even after it was made easier and safer in 1990, the height of the chair, the highest fence, the tight landing and the sharp turns of Canal Turn all add to the drama and stories that unfold year after year. Hard to win? After all that, the survivors then have to tackle the 494-yard run into the line, the longest in the UK with a punishing elbow halfway along. So yes, it's tough to win. Just ask Tony McCoy, one of the finest jump jockeys we've seen in history, who took 15 attempts to win it until he did it last year on Don't Push It. So how do you find the winner with all that against you? Well, finding the winner from a field of 40 horses isn't a straightforward thing. But the key to it, as in with any horse race, is to narrow the field down to the real contenders. Luckily, we've got a wealth of statistics and historical information regarding the Grand National to help us in narrowing down what we need to look for. So narrow the field down and then examine the form on the remaining horses and you can give yourself a real chance of finding the winner. So here's my top 10 tips to narrowing the field down in the Grand National. Number 1. Weight. Your starting point's got to be with the weights. It's the most important point when cutting down the field. The top weight. No winner had carried more than 11 stone 1 pound for 27 years until Don't Push It did it last year when he carried 11 stone 5 pounds to victory. Minimum weight. Only two horses in the past 20 years have carried the minimum 10 stone to victory. So again, you've got both ends of the spectrum here. Discount any horse carrying the minimum 10 stone and any horse carrying over 11 stone 1 pound. Number 2. Age. The last 20 winners have all been between the age of 8 and 12 years old. So avoid the youngsters, avoid the 6 and 7 year olds who haven't got the experience yet and anything older than 12 years who haven't really got the stamina left in their bodies. Sex, number three. The last mare to win the race was Nickel Coin in 1951 and only three mares have won the race in the 20th century. So avoid female horses. Number four, stamina. Clearly four and a half miles round Aintree over those fences is going to be a long old slog. So any horse is going to win the race needs proven stamina. The past 15 winners have all won a race over three miles or more that season, as in the season that they won the Grand National. My tip down here is that even Mon Moam, the 100 to 1 winner a couple of years ago in 2009, had won the previous December over three miles one furlong. Number five, experience. This is naturally connected to the age of the horse but also check that the horse has good jumping experience. You know that Aintree is going to demand it. So the last 20 win winners have all run at least 10 times over fences. So look into the form and make sure they've got some experience over fences and have had at least 10 runs over them. Number six, greys. Only two greys have ever won the Grand National and not since 1961 when Nicholas Silver won as a grey won the race. So a tip here, avoid greys. Number seven, blinkers. In the 36 years, in the past 36 years, sorry, only two horses have won wearing blinkers. And that was Comply or Die back in 2008 
and 10 years before that Earth Summit in 1998. So discount any horse with blinkers. Betting odds, the market. The most likely price of the winner is between 7 to 1 and 16 to 1. 15 winners from the past 20 years have been within this price range. Yes, soft and heavy conditions are obviously going to throw, uh, throw things out a bit and bring outsiders into the frame, as they did with Mon Moan and Red Marauder. But over the past 20 years, the majority of winners have been in that price range. So unless they're going soft or heavy, focus on that 7 to 1 to 16 to 1 range in the markets. One win, number nine. None of the last 20 winners, winners of the race have recorded more than one win during the season. So discount any horse who's more than one win in the, in the season. And previous winner, finally. Only Red Rum, as we said at the beginning of the, of the video, only Red Rum has ever won the Grand National more than once in the race's history. So you can discount any previous winner fairly safely. OK, so how many horses have you got left? On Saturday, when you get your race card, go through looking at all these facts and all these statistics and narrow your field down till you've got down to the real contenders. You should be left with about, I'd probably say this year, you'll be left with about seven or eight horses. You should be able to discount the majority of the horses and leave yourself a chance of picking this year's winner. Getting your bet on. My other piece of advice is obviously that Grand National Day is the busiest day of the year for the bookmakers and they have offer after offer out there. So look around, be picky and make sure you jump on the free bets that are on offer. Get best odds guarantee on your bets so if the odds do move you still benefit. And make sure you're getting uh, multiple place bets. Also visit my site racingprofits.net. I'm going to put up a post of all the winners of the Grand National for the last 20 years on my website with the weights, their ages, etc. So you can go over there, www.racingprofits.net and print it off and check the statistics for yourself. On Saturday morning, I'll also be posting before the race my short list of contenders for everyone, totally free of charge. So come back to the Come back to the website on Saturday morning uh, after 11 o'clock and I'll have posted up my short list of contenders for you. And finally, good luck, because even with all this, it still is a race of a lottery of a race.